Hello and welcome to Module 13, the ICMP, the Internet Control Messaging Protocol. So please don't forget to take notes as I asked you to and submit them when you're all done. All right, what is the ICMP, the Internet Control Messaging Protocol? It provides feedback uh, about issues related to the processing of IP packets under certain conditions. In the early days, uh, when, I, uh, when TCP IP was invented, there was no mechanism of any way to tell how, you know, if your packet got lost or how to, you know, to let you know if some links are down. There was no control mechanism whatsoever. So if you transmitted and your packet got lost, you didn't even know if it got to the destination or not. So ICMP is a protocol. It's like the manager that manages the internet or the networks in general. It could be a private network in itself, all right? Uh, note, the ICMP version 4 are not required and not often allowed within the network for security reasons. For example, uh, you may use the ping command, which is part of the ICMP protocol, to create a ping of death, just keeping in somebody forever. We'll do some of these examples either in class or in, or in one of our uh, security, class, uh, security classes. There are uh, three common messages that you need to know, and they are both in ICMP version 4 and version 6. The host re reachability, destination or service unreachable, and time exceeded. So please um, write these down, these three points. So we'll take each one at a time. Um, when it comes to host reachability, that's the ping command. Ping command using the echo request. So write this down. The ping command using echo request and echo reply when the receiver replies to it. Uh, this is the replies that it can be reached. So the ping command is you're sending out an echo request and the receiver sends out an echo reply to tell them, hey, I, I can be reached. That means I'm connected. All right. Um, host reachability, on the other hand, is, uh, I'm sorry, that is host reachability. Destination or service unreachable. Destination or service unreachable is a message to let the sender know that the destination is unreachable. The codes for IPv4 is somewhat a little bit different than IPv6, as you can see. Um, the time to live. Okay, so this is TTL number. There is a field that is a label that's on IPv4 called TTL, or on IPv6 it's called a hop limit. So please write those two down. So IPv6 and IP, uh, PV, uh, and IPv4 both have a limit. They limit the time that the packet can reach its destination. So for IPv4, uh, it's the the by it's a byte. It's about 200. It starts with 255. Every time through you go through a router, that's called a hop. The TTL number it gets decremented. Same thing with the hop field in IPv6. It just if it keeps going and it reaches zero, then the router that grabs it and it, and sees the TTL number has reached zero, then it will create a time exceeded packet, sends it back to the sender, tell them that your TTL number, die, uh, your uh, your packet has died. It you know the TTL number has reached zero. This is when you ping somebody and you receive the uh, the request timeout. All right, so here's what I want you to write down. I know I said a lot of things, but the TTL number in IPv4 or a hop limit in IPv6, this is a label on the packet which is decremented every time you go through a router, which is a hop. If the label reaches zero before the packet reaches the destination, then the ICMP will generate a packet and sends it to the source indicating, indicating time exceeded message. After you ping your, if you do a ping command, you get the, you know, request timeout. If you get the request timeout, that means TTL number has reached zero. All right. Um, the ICMP v6 messages. Now, with the ICMP v6 messages, there is, uh, we want, I want you to write the following down. I want you to write the neighbor discovery protocol, NDP, or sometimes they call it just ND. It has, it has a couple of messages that I want you to know. So I want you to write this down. 
the messages between the router and the host. There are two messages that you need to know, the router solicitation and the router um, advertisement. And so let me describe each one of those. The router solicitation is when the host, when the host asks, for, asks the router for a network prefix in Slack. Remember, uh, the host is saying, hey, because remember, every 200 seconds, the router sends out a router advertisement advertising the prefix. But if the, uh, you know, the PC came up and uh, between those 200 seconds, he's going to send an RS telling, to, telling the default gateway, hey, can you please give me um, my, um, the network prefix, right? So I can make up my own IP address. And then the router will send a router advertisement. So the router advertisement, every 200 seconds, the router will send the network prefix to a host in the Slack, right? In the stateless auto configuration. All right, so the message now, also there's another one between hosts. Between hosts, you use neighbor solicitation and neighbor advertisement. So neighbor solicitation is... I want you to write the following down. So this is important. NS is when a host sends out a message to all hosts in the LAN looking for a MAC address. This is similar to I, I, uh, IPv4 ARP request, right? The same thing. We just call it NS, neighbor solicitation. Or sometimes, the, you know, when the router wants to generate his own uh, 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 ID in the IPv6, remember they, they do the um, the host portion of the IP, either randomly or using EUI, uh, the, the PC is going to send out a neighbor solicitation message telling everybody, does anybody has this um, host ID? And if they do, the, he has to change it. Uh, otherwise, they'll, they'll accept it. All right, so the two times the a PC sends out an NS, a neighbor solicitation, is when they do something similar to ARP, requesting the MAC address of a neighbor, somebody in the LAN, or telling the neighbor, does anybody has this, I, this host ID that I just generated from my IPv6 address? Right? This is called DAD, by the way, because when you generate a host um, portion of the IP, you're trying to look for a duplicate address detection. Right? That's DAD, D-A-D. Now, neighbor advertisement and A is when the, when the device responds back to the NS, right? When it gives you your MAC address or when somebody says, yeah, I got a duplicate address, you can't use that. That's the NA. All right. Now, the ping command. Let's talk about some of the commands, some of the messages. Okay, so that's RA. I'm sorry, we're going backwards. All right, so that's that. We just described that. Okay, so all right, so let's talk about the ping command. When you want to ping, the ping command, ping stands for, so we'll write the following down, packet internet group. That's what P-I-N-G stands for. It, the echo request and echo replied I used to check for connectivity. I know you guys are familiar with this, but I want to make sure we go this into a little bit more details. Remember, so ping, the, the, the packet internet group is part of the ICMP protocol, and they generate the echo request and the echo reply. It is common for the first ping to time out if the address resolution, you know, ARP or ND in IPv6, need to perform before sending an ICMP request. Okay, we'll discuss that also when we're actually doing this in an exercise in class. When you ping 127.0.0.1 or for IPv4 or you ping colon colon one, you are testing the local host for connectivity. So what you're doing is you're asking your TCP IP protocol to, e to create a packet, stamp on it either 127.0.0.1 if it's IPv4 packet or colon colon one. And when you, when you do that, you will, then the, your NIC is going to take that packet, encapsulate it in a frame, put it on the wire and bring it back, loop it back, and open it back up. So what you are testing is to see if your 
able to if the TCP IP stack in the um, in your operating system has been installed correctly. If you don't get a reply, that means something wrong with the TCP IP stack, which is part of the operating system. All right, you can do you can ping the default um, the loopback even if you're not connected to anything. It should respond. All right. You, the next thing you should do when you are troubleshooting is you should ping the default gateway, all right? And then you should remote the remote host. So whenever you're checking for connectivity, here's the thing, ping the default gate, write this down. Whenever you're checking for connectivity, even for a remote host outside, the first thing you do outside your LAN, you ping the default gateway, I'm sorry, ping the loopback, ping the default gateway, and then you ping the, de the, uh, the remote host. What happens if the remote host is very far away and your packet got lost on the way, you know, time exceeded, you know, your TTM number reached zero. What are you going to, you know, yeah. Uh, then wherever your packet failed, ICMP is going to create a time exceeded packet and send it back to you. Then you don't know exactly where the problem is, where the failure is. If you want to find out where the failure is, uh, so this is what we just talked about. We, you do trace route. Trace route, the command trace route is used on inside the router. Trace it is on the command prompt. So this is on the router. Inside the router, you use the same command in the um, in Windows command prompt. All right, so here's what I want you to write when it comes to trace route. It provides a list of hops that were successfully reached along the path. It is, it is best to use this command if the ping fails. So when the ping fails and you want to know exactly where it fails, you use trace route because you're tracing around, you're finding every hop that is successful and eventually it's going to stop where, the, um, where it failed. So here it's saying when you trace route this, you say it's, it took this much time to reach this network, then, then this is the next stop, then this is the next stop, then this is the next hop, right? And eventually, if you see stars, that means there's a failure there, and you can find out where the problem is, the asterisk. All right, so that's it for this chapter, I think, if I'm not mistaken. We're testing the pack, okay? And so write down everything that I told you to, and submit that as homework, and I will see you in chapter 14.